Well, hello everybody, it's Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and I'm bringing you a tutorial on high density prop output management for your controllers. Whoo! Okay, look, um, I'm gonna try to keep this simple because there's been, well, quite a few questions about how do I split up this guy to go to my F48 and not get any errors? That's a great question. So, on the playing field, we have a Spinarchy, 839 nodes, a, oh, what do we got here? Steampunk, 470 nodes, Rosa 696 nodes, the Premium Cube, which is a whopping 2,500 nodes. Now, what's unique about all four, th four of these props? Well, these are all custom models. As you can see, they are custom. And then we have a couple of these guys here. Here's the Grand Illusion at 1,000 pixels. And you notice up here, there's no custom. This is a native file. We've told this that it is 1,000 nodes with 50, 50, 50, all the way to the number of concentric rings. And that equals 1,000 pixels. So how do, you, how do you split it up? We're gonna talk about that. And of course we have our Oh, should we just call this a medium density prop now? It sure seems like it's a medium density prop uh, compared to these guys here, right? Okay, fair enough. Let's get into this. If we left these all on a single output, as they all are, I want you to watch what happens when we try to upload this to a Falcon F48, which is what I have configured for this. I'll go to my controllers. It's already selected. Upload output. Bum, 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 and you have an error. Pixel port 13 has 2,500 nodes allocated, but the maximum is 1,024. Well, come on, we know that's the rule with the Falcon controllers. Uh, controller bank, okay, so there's three banks. There's four outputs per bank, and this top bank is saying, man, you're over the maximum of 3,072. We're trying to squeeze in 10,500. Yo, homie, that dog ain't ever gonna hunt. Never, ever. All right, so we need to fix this because it's, it's just never going to get there. So x -Lights makes it fairly easy, not so intuitive how to manage some of this um, because we can tell it that we want to use as many ports as we'd like. And in this case, maybe we want to use four ports. And then this cool thing pops up here called individual start nodes. And what I love about this is you get to decide where the pixels should start. Most of our strands come in hundreds and fifties. If you feel comfortable putting 200 nodes on an output, then you can do that. Then you could say this one starts at 201. And then that would go 201, 301, 401. Uh, then we could start this one at 401 and maybe start this one at 601 and then that leaves the balance. Does that make sense? So we're going to go 200, 400, 600 and then the final number will start at pixel 601. I think that's going to work just fine for us. Okay, let's look at this next one. This is the Steampunk, which is 470 nodes. Uh, maybe I'm going to split this into two. And we look at these individual segments here. We click the box and we could say string one is on one and then it's saying 236. Okay, this is great if you wanna cut your strings and add a pigtail on just for the sake of starting at pixel number 236. I don't think I'd really wanna do it. You know what I would do here? I'd probably just make this start at 201. Make your second input at 201. Make this simple so you're not cutting, splicing, dicing, and all these things with these strings. It's not necessary. And again, this is dependent uh, on whether you're using power distribution, power management, power balancing, all these funny things, which are, can be very useful, but I put all my data power very close to the prop, so I'd feel comfortable with this. And we'll save that. And then let's go over here to the Rosa wreath. And again, we'll tell this we want two outputs. We'll tell it that I want this to start on. Now, this isn't a bad idea. I'll do the first 300 and then I'll do uh, the final 396 on the second string. 
I'm good with that. That's a nice balance. So one through 300 on one output, and then the remainder there. Now, if you want to use three outputs, you can certainly do that. And then you could tell us one, and then maybe I'm going to start this at 301, and maybe I'm going to start this at 501. In this way, the first 300, and then the second 200, and then the remainder. So that's not a bad idea either. We could do that, and we'll save that. And then let's go to this final whopper here, man. This is a big boy. We better tell this four outputs. Now, how many is four outputs going to take us to? Whew. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. That's 625 on an, uh, per output. Will we be okay? Maybe. Let's find out. And again, we can change these, but let's, let's leave this here for a second because I want to illustrate something you could do at the controller level that can be a huge benefit, but also could be a challenge if you were to upload this a second time or a third time or fourth time and continue to overwrite these changes you make on the controller. All right, so let's go back to this one. I've uh, applied port one to this. So one, two, three, four is going to be applied to this and we'll, we'll, Let's just say, for kicks and giggles, we put a receiver behind each one of these. At least one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this one's going to start at 13. We'll do four outputs. And then we come over here, and we're going to start this on the second bank, which is 17. And there is no way we should be trying to squeeze a thousand pixels out of that bank or out of that port on that second bank. So I think to be sensible, I would do four outputs with this. Uh, can you do three? Sure, 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 sure. And so here becomes the challenge. Um, if you tell it four individual, individual strings of 250, that's what it's gonna send to the controller. So output 17 is gonna get uh, 250 nodes, 18, 250, 19, 250, and 20, 250. Now that's cool if you bought 50 strand strings and decide to put them in after every 200, which is what I plan to do on this model. Or no, I probably didn't. I probably have to make my changes manually. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, it would be great if X Lights allowed us to choose individual start nodes. Okay, let's be very, very, very clear before I steer you wrong. It is individual start nodes, not to be confused with individual start channels. The reason we don't have individual start channels is because we are using some of the X-Lite's auto magic, which is the auto layout models and auto sizing. But what I wish we could see or have the ability to do is have individual start nodes for our native models. That does not currently exist. So maybe write a letter. All right, there we go. Now the question is, will this upload to the controller? Let's find out. Yeah, here's our controller. Upload output. We don't want to get an error. Uploading string port. We didn't get an error. That's a beautiful thing. Let's look at the controller and see what it says. Dun, 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 dun. I've already uploaded the input, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. And here we go. Here's my E131 ArtNet, blah, 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 blah. Fi. It's using 37 universes because based on the number of models, that is what the AutoMagic in XLite says we need. That's all we need, and that's all it sends. Then we go to our output string ports. And this is where we get to see the fruits of our effort. Ah, oh, beautiful. Here's the spinarchy. 200, 200, 200, and 239. That's cool, I love that, okay? Steampunk, 200 and 270. That's a total 470, beautiful. Then we go down to nine, output nine, we said 300, 200, and 196. I think that's sensible, especially if you've got some distance between the controller and that first pixel input. That's not a bad, bad um, strategy. Then let's go to our premium cubes. 625, 625, 625, 625. Ooh, that's gonna be some fun splicing that up. I don't really like that. You know, I would rather do that a little bit differently. If I'm gonna use uh, this many outputs, maybe what I'm going to do is maybe I'll use 600, 
600, 600, and then whatever this balance is, right? Uh, so that's gonna be, oh, oh, I'm gonna need the magic calculator. Magic calculator, where are you? So if we have 2,000, uh, whoop, 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 2,500 minus 1,800, that equals 700. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Let's say on this last output, we put on 700. Uh-oh, uh-oh, look what happened there. Why are we getting that? Because the slider here says we can only go up to 625 based on what X light sent it. So let's see if we can nudge that over just a little bit. Let's see if we can nudge it to 700. Let's see what happens. Yeah, okay. And you can use your arrow key to fine tune it. So now we're at 700, but now the problem is, Get this, now the problem is, we've messed up our second bank here. Now we can't go over 245. Okay, let's take this to 250. Oh, 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 oh. I want you back at 700, then I want the second one here at 250. But wait a minute, that's not gonna work either because we need 320. And now, even if I take this to the end, I still don't have enough room. Well, I do, I do, I do. Uh, let's take that back. There we go, there we go. This is great. Now I can have up to 700 per pixel output on bank one, up to 320 pixels on bank two, but on bank three, I can't have more than four pixels per port. That means when I get down here and all this, it's useless. Can't use it. That's no bueno. So these are the things you need to think about. So let's set these all back to 625. I'm just gonna copy this, copy this, put these all back at that, and then I'm gonna bring the slider back to 625. And again, sometimes just using the arrow keys easier. Okay, now we have no red. So perhaps, perhaps it makes more sense to use two receivers on this prop and spread that out some, okay? Because even with this at 625, we're still not leaving a lot of room with the remainder of our F48. Okay, so let's do this. Let's make this sensible. On this prop here, we're going to make this eight outputs. Okay, save. So what does that work out to? 2,500 divided by eight is 312.5. Okay, let's just see what that does. We save that, and but the problem is now, we are starting this on port 13, 14, 15, 16. This is now going to go over into 17, 18, 19, 20. So we might wanna move this to 21. Come on now. 21, yes, beginning. 21 to 24, and then we'll start this one on 25. Okay, and these are all just ideas. See, we have nothing red, no problem there. We're gonna go to our controllers. We're going to upload this. And it's done. We're gonna open this up. And let's take a look at our string ports now. And this should look a lot cleaner. Oh, we're still seeing the premium cubes with 625. We're gonna have to change that. That should not be 625. Let's go back to our layout. Let's look at the premium cube. Oh, you know what? You know what? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be, um, let's do this. Let's save that. Eight channels, now click on individual. Oh, that's so much better. You would think that would change that for you automatically, but it doesn't. So now, Let's go back over to our controllers. Let's upload output. Let's see if it overwrites it. It should. Please overwrite it. And to our string ports. Bada boom, bada bang. 
Oh, that looks so much nicer. Now that's the most sensible. Now it's 312 uh, per port. Okay, now does that mean you want to splice and dice all these? Probably not, but look what that has done for the rest of your F48. Now we're opening up the ability to add more props at the end instead of pa pixel packing the heck out of this thing. So now let's go in here and make some sense of this. This is going to be fun. Check this out. We want to put, um, let's just do 300. 300 on all of these. So that's going to be 13, right? So that's going to be, uh, it's, well, it's a little bit different than that. Let's just put uh, 300. Control V, Control V, Control V. I'm going to put these in all of these except the last one. It should be 2,500. So that's going to leave us a balance of 400. So I'm cool with that. Now you could make them 350. So if you have those individual 350 strands, that would be really good too. But let's just put this at 400. Watch what's going to happen up here. It's going to change a little bit. If I put this last one at 400 on that output eight, you'll see here that we have to change the slider to 400. And again, when we change the slider to 400 to accommodate that one output, we're down to 311 each for the remaining third bank. So we've got four receivers that will not be able to go over 300 nodes per output. And that's okay if you're cool with that. If you want to squeeze this down a little bit more and do these at 350 per, then this number comes back a little bit. Okay? I, I'm hoping this makes sense. The slider's important on all of the Falcon controllers. It's important to have this. The one exception is the F4, and that's a different story. Okay. So let's leave this alone. Let's look down the list here. We have 250 for the Grand Illusions. I'm good with that. The mother of all wreaths, I'm not necessarily good with this because I don't want to split it that way. Probably what I would do on this is put this at 300 and then put this at 340. Now, this is what is really important to know about this. I would take a screenshot of this and keep it on you because I'm going to hit save. And you've got it working just beautifully. You love it, you love it, you love it. And then you go back to your layout here and you decide to make a change. And when you upload this change, it is going to push that upload here and override all of this. Anything manually you did in here is gonna be overridden. What I would love to see from x -Lights or the controller is the ability to lock this output to where no matter what you send to it, it ignores it. I want to lock this in place. If you can't do it at the controller level, then how about we have a way to lock the output so that when I upload these other props I'm going to send to that same controller, it does not mess with the settings that I've changed in here. Again, we, we can make all these changes in here with the pixels. So for the custom, it's kind of a no-brainer. We don't have to worry about that. But with the native files, it can become problematic because you may divvy it up a certain way here and change it later. Perfect example is the Mother of All Reefs. It's going to do 320. I don't want 320. I want 300 and 340. Take your time with this stuff. The idea behind this is to maximize your controller in a sensible manner so that you can use all of it. Don't be throwing 696 pixels in here and just not being able to use the rest of your controller because the sliders are now not going to let you do it. This is just how it works on the Falcon controllers. And there's nothing wrong with that. The Colt board's a little bit different, but you know everything has a restriction at some point. So it's still a matter of balancing your outputs and pixels. All right, let me know what questions you have and we'll catch you later.